Hello, Dr. Adashi? Hello? 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 बरोबर हो मग तुला ऐकू येत आता मी काय बोलतो ते मी कारण इकडून बोलतोय का ठीक आहे ऐकू येत का माझ तुम्हाला हो येत 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 काय प्रॉब्लेम ओके राईट ओके बाय चलो बाय
फॉलो मी मी तुला पीसीसीओचे एक प्रोफेसरचे मी तुझा नंबर मी त्यांना शेअर केला होता हा हा ओके ओके बरोबर आहे करेक्ट 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 हा आणि तसंच ते जमीर बाशा म्हणून कोण आहे ते कृष्णा कोईमतूर वाले आहेत ते ती पण तुला हे पाठवली मी हा आता आता जस्ट पाठवली आहे तुला आणि वैष्णवी म्हणून त्याच कॉलेजचे आहेत कोणीतरी ठीक आहे राईट माय गुडनेस बर 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 या या एकच आहे आता फक्त माझ्यामध्ये या एकाला पाठवलं की त्यांना मिळेल म्हणजे हा ठीक आहे ऑल राईट ओके चल बाय बाय थँक्स बाय सग टेस्ट के आणि तू अंदाजे साढ़तीन ची आसपास इतन बस इकड़न अस इत बस लगली गरज तो मे ती का खर फार नहीं है फोर थर्टी फोर थर्टी ऐसी आसपास कारण नर एक चार चाड़ीस पर्यत संपाइल लगे कारण मग नाही चार पन्नास पर्यंत दहा मिनिट शेवटचे क्वेश्चन आन्सर ला द्यायचे असं चालू दोन एकशे लोकांचं रजिस्ट्रेशन आहे ऑलरेडी काय प्रॉब्लेम आणि गुरुवार शुक्रवार शनिवार परत एम आय डी सी वाले पण त्यातले गुरुवारी मी त्यांना आता पीसीएमसी ला घेऊन जातोय तर आपण शुक्रवारी त्यांना एक डेमो द्यायचा आहे फक्त शनिवारी बहुया शनिवार किती इंटरेस्ट है तैयार ना ती लैंग्वेज जे कर शनिवार सका शुक्रवार मात्र इत सग मगे जस के सो दुड यस हलो डायरेक्ट चालू होते म्हणाले आमचे चार येतील त्याच्यामध्ये आमचे चार येतील त्याच्यामध्ये टॉकिंग
Thank you. Too. Hello? Uh, Dr. Akashi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. 
Okay, so I'm going to start uh, the webinar. Uh, good <laughs> okay. afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think we have quite a lot of uh, participants already who have joined in. So without uh, wasting another minute of uh, time, I'm going to start this webinar. Uh, welcome you all. Uh, this is a very different uh, webinar that we are having today. Uh, on behalf of Impulse, my name is Polymy and uh, I am handling the marketing at uh, Impulse. Uh, we are very excited to host this webinar uh, called Virtual Labs and New Way of Learning. Uh, at Infords, we believe that uh, student success comes in when we believe when we try to invite different types of learning, and our focus has always been on student outcomes. And when we got in touch with Dr. Agashe, who's doing this great uh, mission on uh, virtual labs, we found that there's a great connect in both these uh, ideologies, and we are happy to host the webinar for today. Just to give a brief introduction of uh, Dr. Sudhir Agashe, he's a uh, College of Engineering Pune's veteran who's currently the Dean of Student Affairs and the Principal Investigator of the National Virtual Laboratory Project. That is what he will be talking about today. Um, he specializes um, in instrumentation and control department. Um, and he believes that academia can play a huge role in changing the perception of of um, engineering graduates by actively engaging them with the corporate world. Uh, so Dr. Agashe will take you through the entire virtual lab laboratory project today. Uh, but before we start, can I have uh, the participants go through a small poll which will take not more than 30 seconds of your time uh, because that will just give us a better understanding of how many of you are aware of the virtual lab. So this question will come up on your screen and you can take, choose any of the options that uh, is suitable for you. Okay, so I can see 80% have uh, uh, almost answered. So I'm going to keep it running for another uh, few seconds before I close it. And I have another one poll after this, and then I will uh, pass this uh, presentation to uh, Dr. Agashi, who will take you through. So 64% have already voted. And uh, We'll keep it open for another eight seconds. Okay. Uh, just to give you a brief, 76% of uh, the participants have heard about uh, virtual laboratories, uh, and 70% of the ones who are attending the webinar today have answered this uh, question. Um, and as discussed, uh, I'm going to just run through the second uh, poll as well, and uh, this will give some more information about the virtual lab's uh, understanding. Another question has come up on your screen. Okay, so I think we've got uh, the responses as that we were looking for. Um, I'm going to make uh, Dr. Agashe the presenter for this uh, <coughs> webinar now. And uh, so you can then cast your screen at your end so that uh, everybody is attending can see your presentation. Hello. 
Yeah, Pauline, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. But I am and unable to see your screen. Oh, is that? Okay. Yeah, One second. you'll have to click on the screen sharing options. Okay, one second, let me check. Um, one second, let me check. Yeah. Can you see uh, my presentation now? Not yet. Not yet. One sec. Not yet? Not yet. Not yet. Um. Oh. Yeah, I can see uh, the webinar. Uh, you have opened your video, uh, sir. But what you have okay. to was you have to what you have to do is you have to share your screen this is the webinar that uh, that I, yeah. yeah once screen Can you see that now? Uh, not yet. Mm. One sec, one sec. Not yet? No. Uh, no problem. Me. Yeah. Now can can you try and show the screen? Yes. Just oh, check. Perfect. Yes, we can see your screen. You can see that? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So, good afternoon. I'll, I'll take the charge, Paul Lumi, now. Yes, yes, absolutely, sir. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, friends. And uh, nice to see that uh, many of you have uh, gone through the virtual labs and you are aware about this uh, new learning way through virtual labs because it is always being said that engineering has always a backbone of experimentation and good laboratories can only create good engineers only theoreticians will not uh, serve the purpose what a uh, corporate world is looking for keeping this entire thing in mind in 2009 uh, we started this uh, concept of virtual laboratories along with uh, other 11 institutions out of them eight are IITs one NIT and two universities of course College of Engineering Pune is uh, a part of this uh, entire virtual laboratories project since beginning and we have implemented uh, the labs and I wish that I'll run through what exactly we have done under the initiative of MHRD and the project called as National Mission on Education through ICT. It's basically the objective is to give you access to the laboratories in two ways. One is a simulation based laboratory wherein uh, a simulator, a mathematical model is working at the back end of uh, the system and a student or a faculty member can perform the experiment as if he is performing experiment in his laboratory. The idea is to understand that there are problems in many engineering institutions and students should not be deprived of the experimental work. Now the scalability can be a big thing in this uh, uh, episode of virtual laboratories uh, in simulation mode but what is important is to share the costly equipment and resources like the equipment which uh, any IIT or College of Engineering Pune has can a student from any other college use this infrastructure without moving from the location so geographically there could be a distance and a student can sit in his own college and perform the experiment in a remote triggered mode. 
So the other exercise which we conducted was related to remote triggered laboratories. All the simulation based experiments are available on vlab.co.in. So if you can go to this website, you will find those experiments. Now the site will look like this, wherein you will find all our partner institutions like IIT Delhi, IIT Bombay and all other IITs and you will find College of Engineering Pune. Now the entire exercise which many uh, leading faculty members from these institutions put in their efforts and developed 120 laboratories and in each lab there are around minimum eight experiments so in a way you have a basket of around 10,000 experiments in front of you and your students can use this facility remotely and whenever they have time to exercise this so it is not mandatory that the student must be free and it must be within the college hours but the idea here is to make them aware that this is not a replacement to the laboratory which you have. In no way we are enforcing that this is a replacement. Now if you go to the laboratories developed by College of Engineering Pune, there are nine broad areas in which College of Engineering Pune contributed in five areas. And we developed 10 laboratories. Most of our labs are from my department, that is instrumentation and control department, we developed six laboratories. Four laboratories in electrical, three labs in mechanical, one lab in electronics and communication, biomedical engineering and computer science. Uh, we can now view a short film on virtual labs, which is the initiative of MHRD. Follow me. Yes, sir. I'm just going to play that. Yes, please.
Uh, sir, you can uh, continue with your presentation. Yes. Uh, I continue with the presentation wherein uh, uh, there was a short film. Uh, I request all the attendees uh, to go to the website which I'll mark at the end and you can see that film once again where uh, the then director, uh, Dr. Sasrabudde, now the chairman AICT, uh, was very instrumental and uh, he developed one lab also. And he was very fond of uh, this entire exercise of changing the engineering education system in the country. Uh, the idea is uh, to give you a one-stop solution to perform the laboratory. What happens in most of the time for the students is whenever a student come across with a lab, the basic need is to help him through a systematic way. Like, whenever he wants to perform the experiment, he has to go to a particular department and there are various tabs which you will find. So, uh, upcoming and conducted workshops, people involved, lab coordinators and contact information. And the reason for this slide is to make you aware that in any lab, any experiment, if there are issues, you can definitely talk to the concerned professor from the concerned college. So that's the commitment which we have as a consortium. But if you go to various other things, you will find that there are different labs available and under that particular lab, if you click on to the list of experiments available, you will find those experiments. So I just show you the screenshot, for example, under electrical engineering stream, you will find some labs developed by College of Engineering Pune, like sensor modeling and simulation, industrial automation, electrical machines, and programmable logic controller. Now, you will find, and the students also would, for them it would be easy to click on to the experiment in which he is interested in. My appeal to all those who are present today is to make it a point that before you actually perform the experiment, it would be a good idea to ask the student to perform these experiments online without any apprehension. Because in most of the cases in our laboratories, you will find and you will definitely find that there are tools and there are schedules, there are shortages and there are problems, but a student who has come with the preparation through these experiments, it would be very easy for you to, of course, perform the practicals and grade the student. So the basic idea is to ask them to perform the experiment before the actual experiment. So this is the list of experiments. After going through the list of experiments, what is important is to understand what is the aim of each experiment. So I'm going through now one particular lab, which is basically a sensor modeling and a simulation lab wherein you will have experiment on characterize the temperature sensor, thermocouple or RTD, and all the sensors which are normally required for an undergraduate student to study in most of the disciplines and in most of the colleges under most of the universities because before finalizing these experiments, as a consortium partners, we have gone through the curriculum of most of the universities and while developing those experiments, we made it a point that minimum 70% experiments from a particular subject must be included in this particular lab. So you will find these experiments. So if you click on to that experiment, then he will be guided to the experiment actually, wherein there is aim, there is a pretest, theory, procedure. Now this is something like giving them information at one place. Now this becomes very, very relevant and important for any student before performing the experiment. So we expect that the teachers who are involved in the laboratory work should encourage students to not to jump 
directly do the experiment, but read the aim, understand what exactly is expected outcome of this experiment. This is how we can slowly take them towards outcome-based education. So there are objectives and then we expect him to go through a sample pretest. Now this pretest is in such a fashion that before you perform this experiment, basic knowledge about that experiment must be there with you. The idea is to inculcate the habit of self-learning amongst the students. Now this is equally important for all of us as teachers that students, those who are coming for the laboratory, must come with some preparation. So there has to be some involvement of these students in the experiment also. After completing this pretest, then a student can read the procedure and theory. Now this is very, very important for him to understand what that experiment is all about. There is a detailed theory given by the professor in charge of that laboratory so that a student instead of searching information at various places, let him get that information at one place. The idea is, and of course this is very, very important for all of us from this teacher point of view that he has gone through the theory which is relevant to this experiment. After going through that, then there are videos uploaded already in most of the laboratories indicating how to perform that experiment. Just to give you an idea, you will find for characterizing the temperature sensor RTD, he can perform this experiment, he can view that film and this is where we expect him to learn on its own. In most of the cases it is being found and my association with industry for last so many years clearly indicated a fact that students are not taking interest or students are not taking that opportunity of slave learning. They do not normally use the help file, they do not read that file and just keep on asking questions which is not accepted in any industry. Now this is personally my humble request to instead of giving them a ready-made solution to a problem, let them struggle to get the solution. Virtual lab is one way to make them aware that you have to work, you have to search and then you will get the answer. So after looking at the simulator, then he can read the procedure required to perform the experiment. For all the experiments which we have developed, you will find that most of the cases, the procedure is there and after completing the procedure, you can go to the simulator part of it. The simulator screen and the simulator is built in open source. So there is no need and absolutely there is no need that you should have a license at your desktop or in your institution. That's number one. Number two, most of these open source simulators which we have developed in COEP are light in weight so that they won't take a lot of bandwidth. They don't need a lot of bandwidth. That's another aspect of it. The third most important thing is whatever way we expect a student to perform that experiment, in a simulated way, the same is being implemented while performing the experiment. Like you select the bridge, you select the resistance, then you add the weight, then you find out the voltage, what you will get at the bridge output. Now, I'm discussing all those things because in most of the experiments you will find that a student needs to understand that these are the things which are very, very important for him while performing the experiment and this ensures that there is involvement of student while performing the experiment. After completing this, a student is supposed to go to the post lab test. Now we have picked up 
the post lab from uh, various laboratories, the pre from other lab, just to give you an idea that you can perform these experiments, keeping in mind that you have all the prerequisite available, you have performed the experiment, and now let us check what is the extent of understanding as far as this experiment is concerned. After completing this post lab test, a student will come to know that how much he has performed. But it's not all. What we have done is, after this, there is a review question session in which there are certain questions based on the experiment which we have asked a student to answer and let that student go through these questions and if need be, he can perform that experiment again and answer most of the questions associated with the experiment. Now, instead of asking a student to uh, go and search so many things, whatever we have referred, we have given an indication that these are the useful links from where you can get most of the information. Instead of asking students to go through various websites, in most of the cases you will find these websites are of the form marketing. So there is just an information, student hardly learns anything out of it. And that's where you will find that useful links are given, books which we have referred are given, and we will enthuse the students to read the material. After completing the experiment, we expect the student to uh, give the feedback, and this feedback is equally important for all the lab developers and the professors who are involved in this lab. And the reason is, this is the chance we get to review the experiment and if need be, depending on the critical uh, feedback what a student or the teacher has given, we may modify the experiment or we may suggest you something. Now, if you look at the experiments and the labs, you will find the labs, various labs are available. Whenever these labs are available, the experiments are available, but please do not forget, these are not only from College of Engineering Pune, but these are from all the institutions, the consortium partners, 12 institutions, which are part of this entire exercise of virtual labs. So if you go to vlab.co.in, you will find experiments from other institutions also. The only way to do it is just click on the name of the institution. You will be uh, guided towards that uh, institution's website and from there you can perform the experiment. Uh, the idea is to continue this and the basic thing is simulation may not be the only solution. What we need to do is we have to take them to the actual laboratories also. But the problem which we are facing is the cost of these laboratories are very high. That's number one. Number two, maintaining these laboratories would be an issue, would be a challenge to many colleges. The third thing is the trained manpower, which is available in many colleges to support these labs may not be possible. And that's the reason. There was a second option which we worked out in which we said, can we have a remote triggered laboratories? Now remote triggered laboratories means a laboratory in which a student can book a slot and book that instrument or the plan for a couple of hours. As far as College of Engineering Pune is concerned, we have developed three laboratories in the area of sensor modeling, advanced process control, and industrial automation. These labs are basically in the form of uh, 13 pilot plants which we have developed. And after looking at this film, I'm going to demonstrate you how to use these labs and how to take advantage of this virtual lab. Follow me? Yes, sir. I'm just playing the video. Yes, please go ahead. Please go ahead.
So you can continue with your presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Balmi. Uh, the same short film on RT Labs at COEP is available on the website. And I request uh, the participating teachers to uh, find some time and uh, go through that particular film that will give you an idea uh, how to use this lab. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you demonstration of the remote triggered laboratories. Now please keep this in mind. These remote triggered laboratories can be used by students of your institution sitting there by booking a slot requesting us to give the access of the lab. I'll show you now uh, how to use this lab. So the idea is uh, you are expected to go to portal.coepvlab.ac.in. Now there are four things which are available. One is basically a virtual terminal unit which is nothing but the remote triggered laboratories portal. The second is the virtual lab simulation portal which is used for any college which can be uh, a nodal center of this project in which we can uh, install uh, as software there if you give us a server and you can use uh, the lab virtual laboratories from your institutions. But please keep this in mind, this is not a precondition. And if certain colleges are facing a lot of difficulties as far as the bandwidth is concerned, there is another option available which is called as virtual lab simulation portal under intranet. Means the server will be installed there and we will install software from our side and students, your students, after registration without internet, they can still use these laboratories. I'll just show you uh, for the interest of the teachers uh, what exactly and how you can use this lab for the teaching purpose. The idea is, for example, if you are a teacher in a college and wish to see what your students are doing, then in that case, there is a tracking mechanism available. If you install that tracking mechanism, you will come to know about how the students are using these labs. For example, till date, 
around 17,845 uh, students or users have used this lab. That's number one. When you go to various departments and the labs, you will find that these labs are being used by students from different disciplines in a different way and till the time around 13,921 hours of lab is being used by the students only through this portal. Now we are not counting the number which are directly on internet but if you wish you can have access to these laboratories but what is important here is to understand the beauty of uh, these laboratories. For example, if I go to electrical and now this is where as a teacher interests me. For example, which lab is being used most, which lab is not being most, not being used by the students. In that lab, which particular experiment is being used by students and this gives us a feedback that why certain experiment is not being used. One reason could be that experiment is not there in the curriculum or the way the experiment is being designed is not suitable to the students. Now this is possible not only that you can go through college wise the colleges which are associated to us as a nodal center, for example, a college from Coimbatore, Kumar Guru College, and I want to check, uh, for example, one student or somebody who is registered in that. So from that college, there are around 165 registrations. Out of that, if a teacher who is interested from that college wants to find out what exactly he has worked on, so you will get a link indicating that these are the experiments a student has used for this much time. So this is the feedback what you get out of this entire exercise. Now the question here is once you get that it's up to us to decide how best we can use this facility. This is about the uh, virtual laboratory. Now I will go to the lab which is typically for remote triggered lab. So if you go to remote triggered lab, you will find the portal available and if you have signed in, you have signed in as a student, then you will get the uh, username and password from our secured server and then a student can register for a course and he can book a slot and he can perform the experiment without any monetary implication. For example, now I will demonstrate you uh, one experiment how to perform the experiment for example a student has logged in now here you will find that particular student can have it's, it's like uh, the uh, Facebook for example he can go for a test he can go for a remote test means from here if he has booked the slot he can perform the experiment by clicking my links he can download the presentations with the professor who has uploaded to perform these experiments. He can message to the professor, he can book a slot or he can even attend the webinar also. Now what I wish to do is for the sake of time I will quickly demonstrate you the remote triggered labs. Now though I am sitting here in COEP, similar experience you can have for your students after clicking my link and if your slot is booked for example a student has booked a slot for boiler and heat exchanger and he wants to perform the experiment so he can click on that experiment so this portal would give him the capability to develop his own logic for performing the experiment and I think this is where you can challenge your students most. You can ask them to develop the logic and once the logic is developed, he can perform the experiment. For simplicity, I'll just take one or two cases and perform the experiment. This entire 
development which you can see on my screen that I am developing a particular logic for PID controller tuning. This entire thing is de being developed in-house by COEP developers. And this is an open source. You don't need any certification. You don't need, <coughs> sorry, you don't need any license. And you can perform that experiment by connecting the blocks like this. But we always prefer and we always expect that he should go through the downloads and the documents, see the documents, and make sure that he has learned, he has read the experimental things. And then he can perform. For example, I'll just right click this and then I'll configure saying that this is what I want to switch on the heater. I'm just taking one example for you. So what I'm doing is I want to switch on the heater and I want to control the temperature of the boiler. For example, this is the temperature. Now whatever I'm selecting here is available in the manual attached with this experiment. We always recommend students to go through that and then perform the experiment. For example, now I'll give the controller. Now look at the configurability which you have. This is the best way to learn the PID controller. In my opinion, this is the most important and most configurable PID controller. He can put the values and simply submit this. Once he has submitted, he can compile this after compilation, the project is going to start. That means if I say now run, the plant is going to start. So the execution started. And then I can see the mimic. And I can plot the trains also. So you can see here, the trains would come because then he will understand how to perform the experiment and whether that performance of the experiment is going as per his or her logic. Now our idea is to give him the maximum freedom to perform the experiment. We go to the most important part of this entire exercise is you will find the camera is connected to this. So a student sitting there can click on to the camera and then he can perform so he can perform the experiment he can view the camera from the camera he can check everything whatever he is interested in and then mimic okay now a student can see the mimic over here and that mimic will give him right way to perform the experiment. So for example, now the temperature, we started uh, this TT1 and now the temperature will go on increasing. He will see what's happening here and it is up to him to decide whether the logic which I have developed is correct or not. Now the temperature, there are fluctuations of 0 0.02 degrees Celsius. He has to figure out whether these readings are correct or these readings are noisy. And after performing that experiment, just look at the mimic. Now, the beauty of this mimic, this is a live mimic, means currently the plant is running. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start this heater by clicking the, let's close this, and now I'll start the heater. So I'll toggle that. Once I toggle that, this heater would get started and then the temperature will start going up. Now that's what we have to check through the, now 
look at this. Now the heater is on and then what we need to check is whether that heater is physically on. So after some time this will become green and the student will get a feel that yes the temperature is rising, there is a change, the SCR is fired 100%. Now look at this. Now the heater is on and you will find that after some time this temperature will go on. Now this is the experience what a student will gain, this is hands-on. This is where he will gain the confidence that yes, now let's look at the temperature has started increasing and then whether his control is foolproof, the temperature will get monitored and controlled. But we always keep in mind that these are students, so enough care is being taken while developing this lab wherein even if a student wish, he cannot damage the system. So it's a foolproof system. Student need not bother about what will happen if I make a mistake. In fact, we believe that through the mistakes only we will learn. And as a teacher, it is our responsibility to show him that this is the mistake. And next time, you need not make that mistake. But he should not have fear while performing the experiment, saying that if I make a mistake, what will happen? These are costly equipment. Nothing will happen. We can guarantee for that. So this is how the experiment can run. You can view that experiment through a camera so that though geographically or physically a student is away from the experiment, he is very, very close to the pilot plant which we have. I just wanted to demonstrate you this type of experiment which you should encourage your students to perform. Now what I will do is I'll quickly close uh, this experiment and stop this. So I have stopped the experiment. Then I can stop this experiment. So this will stop. A student will gain a lot of knowledge out of this experiment. Similarly, while performing these and while challenging the students, we always recommend students to take part in national level competitions like Integrated Technology Olympiad, wherein we always encourage students to solve the industry problems. Now, my appeal to all those who are participating in this webinar, as a teacher, please contribute to the development of the students by helping us in encouraging your students to take part in this integrated technology olympiad or become a mentor of those students or the most important thing is if you want to develop experiments on the platform of virtual labs please let us know because 12 institutions coming together cannot solve the problem of 3000 odd institutions across the country we need help from each and every faculty member working in an engineering college to make sure that our engineers, those who are passing out from our colleges, are being treated equally by industries and not by saying that you have not learned anything out of it. So please help us and please make sure that you are part of this entire exercise of virtual lab. You are part of this integrated technology olympiad exercise because these exercises are nation building exercises. Thank you so much for being with us. I purposely kept last 10 minutes. Uh, Paulami, you can take over and if there are certain questions from the participants, we can take few questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Agashe. Um, I would request all participants to please put their questions on the chat box. Uh, there are this question uh, option that you can see on your screen. If you can just type in your questions, I'll read out your questions and sir can answer them accordingly. Uh, just uh, while you all are uh, you know, sending in your questions, um, and I, I would like to thank Dr. Agashe for this uh, wonderful session. I think uh, all the participants have uh, got a very rich experience of how the virtual laboratory can be implemented at uh, your college. 
as a part of imports uh, what uh, you know we are trying to give as an add on is that uh, we've tried to get all these experiments ready and available to you on our platform so uh, you know everything is going to be at one uh, you know spot for all teachers and students to um, access and everything is free of cost uh, so that's something which just wanted to announce but uh, i think we have have a question from Professor John Pinto, who has said uh, he is interested in using this virtual lab and I belong in Mangalore, uh, Karnataka. Uh, sir, uh, as uh, you know, we have already mentioned, uh, you know, how you can go ahead and uh, use this. Uh, there's one question from Dr. Sudhakar Reddy. Uh, what is the procedure to set up uh, RTL? Uh, can you repeat? Follow me. It's a uh, what is the lab. procedure to set up the RTL, the remote lab? What yeah. is the procedure to set up that? I think that's the question. Uh, see, the remote triggered labs uh, can be used by uh, the students from any college, but we always recommend that the students should come through the college authorities by signing and registering as a student, and it is to be supplemented by the teacher. Idea is once he has registered, and the college has indicated that yes we are interested we will book his slot and we will give him access to those labs so please write to me on my email id uh, which uh, paulami uh, at the end you can uh, maybe uh, you can circulate my email id also to the participants i'll take care of that okay sure sure uh, we have another question uh, for implementing this in our college. Is there any payment needed? Uh, this is by Professor Arjun K. I think I can also answer this. There is no uh, cost involved in this because uh, uh, virtual laboratory is an initiative by the MHRD, and uh, it's been clearly mentioned that this is a uh, venture which is helping uh, engineering students attain better knowledge. So there is no cost in Im implementing this in your college and using this. Um, so I'm moving to the next question. Um, how to perform circuit-based experiments? This question has been asked by Professor Nyaneshwar Kanade. Uh, so sir, maybe you can answer this. How to perform a circuit-based experiment? Uh, see, circuit-based experiments are basically will fall under that electronic stream. And there are good laboratories uh, from, uh, one is from IIT Kharagpur, and uh, IIT Guwahati also has one lab. So my request to professor is to go through their labs and uh, start using those simulators to perform these experiments. <clears throat> I hope you, I have answered the question. Okay. Uh, I think there is a question by Dr. Suvakanta Dash. Uh, do you have any plan to establish a virtual laboratory for pharmaceutical science? Uh, uh, professor, uh, most of the, uh, this entire exercise which we did is basically for engineering uh, and the polytechnic, of course, uh, engineering and polytechnic students. But I recommend that you should uh, see the laboratories developed by Amrita. And these laboratories are very, very close to your requirement. I wish that you should see the labs of Amrita University. Okay, uh, just one question that we've just received now, that can we operate these virtual laboratories through our mobile phones? This is asked by Professor Sunil Patel. Uh, Professor Patel, uh, we are developing the app for that. As far as COEP labs are concerned, we have already put them on uh, the mobile, but we normally do not recommend that to be used on mobile because uh, the view what you get on the screen may not be correct. That's that's the recommendation. Yeah, Paulumi. Yeah, so there is uh, one question um, on any lab or nanomaterials asked by Professor Pooja Chawla. Uh, Ma'am, I don't think at this stage we have a lab on nanomaterials. Uh, I can also check once, but as far as I know, till date, there is no lab on nanomaterials. 
Okay, okay. Uh, sir, uh, there is one question uh, by um, Professor uh, uh, Prem Kumar. Can we take printout of students' experiments results? Yes, Professor, you can very much take uh, the results and you can attach them as a record also. That is, that is definitely possible. But we also recommend that let the students perform the experiment uh, without any fear. So record is one part of it. You can anyway take it. OK. Um, and I think there are a lot of questions coming in, uh, you know, giving a lot of thanks to you. Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, questions that people are asking, saying that it was a nice uh, presentation. So I'm not reading out those. Um, you know, uh, our questions. But um, there are a lot of you who have also asked that if the recording of this webinar will be available. Yes, we will be making the recording of this webinar available. Uh, uh, just give us a day or two. We will be, uh, you know, sending you a Google Drive link where you can access the recording of this webinar at your end. And uh, I hope that will help you to understand if you've missed out on any of these information. Um, I'm just going to ask the last question of the evening. That is, is it, uh, if we need to configure a server, how is it possible and what all configuration is needed for the server? This is asked by Professor Arjun K. And this is the last question we will be taking for this evening. Uh, professor, uh, if you send an email to me, I'll give you the <coughs> server configuration required and we will help you in setting up uh, the server there. We will definitely help you out. Okay, so I think, uh, you know, there are a lot of questions on, uh, you know, pharmacy institutes and a lot of, uh, you know, people want to contribute to this as well. But um, I, I understand uh, you all have a lot of questions. Uh, can I please request you all to send us an email uh, at uh, info at inbox.com and we will be diverting all these questions to Sir directly who will answer it to them. And also in case you uh, have many more questions and would like to have uh, you know such kind of webinars again we would love to conduct them um, you know and uh, dr agache uh, would definitely like to see much more participation from all your end so the email id is info at the rate inpods.com i'm just uh, i'm just going to present it on the screen and you can see it Thank you, Balami. Yes, sir. So I'm just uh, showing the slide which has the email ID. Uh, we are going to send all the questions that you will be asking us directly to uh, Dr. Agashe so that uh, you know we don't want him to keep getting uh, you know uh, you know we will send all that is required and from the same ID we will be sending you the recording as well. So the ones who have missed out on uh, getting most part of the webinar due to some of the other technical difficulties should not have a problem. We will send you the recording as well. Thank you everybody for attending the webinar uh, and we appreciate Dr. Agashe spending this time that you have uh, for you the so last much. one hour. So uh, it yeah. was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you.